is, is what happens when the gods want to come down to the earth. They can't do it themselves and so they have an intermediary, an avatar, who is half God and half human. Okay, that's what they do. And they call that an avatar. When you're in an online world and you really can't crawl inside of your computer, you make yourself an avatar, a go-between. Okay? But anyway, that number 33 is the number for the avatar in the New Age movement. There was a Marvel comic book, I used to have this one, called The Son of Satan, who depicted a superhero who was the child of Satan and a human woman. His birthday was on the 33rd day of the year, which was February the 2nd. That's Groundhog Day. By the way, you remember a movie called Groundhog Day? It's this guy that is this real nasty, self-centered, conceited weatherman. And on the 33rd day of the year, he wakes up, having died the night before, wakes up again, again on the 33rd day of the year, relives the entire day all over again, and eventually he keeps getting better and better and better and better until he's, until he's in bed with the woman. You see where we're going here, okay? Uh, but anyway, the son of Satan was born on February the 2nd, 33rd day of the year. Um, It was in 1933 that FDR, who was a 33rd degree Mason, put the all-seeing eye on the back of the $1 bill. That represents the unfinished and then finished work of the Tower of Babel. We mentioned Waco, Texas. Highway 77, the destruction of the church. What happened? In Waco, Texas, you have a religious compound. I don't like anything about their doctrine. But you had a religious compound that was burnt down to the ground on Highway 77. The leader of this particular group was named David Koresh. Guess how old he was? 33 years old when he died. Highway 77 goes up to Oklahoma City. We're just a few blocks away from Highway 77. You had the Alfred P. Murrah building. Now, this again is interesting. Alfred P. Murrah was a 33rd degree mason. The building that they built in honor of him had three rows of columns. There were 11 columns in each row. 11, 11, 11. That's 33. Okay? Um, The building... By the way, I remember where I was and I remember watching the news and I remember... All of a sudden, they run everybody away because they said they found more explosives inside the building. I remember that. Then, of course, they came back and said, we didn't, we didn't say that. <laughs> Where did you get that idea? No, explosives? There were no explosives. It was Timothy McVeigh, right? Okay. So, after the, uh, after the initial uh, explosion... The Alfred P. Murrah building was allowed to remain extending exactly 33 days. And then it was fully demolished. And they pinned it all on one guy. And I think there was a conspiracy. They pinned it all on one guy, Timothy McVeigh. Now, he may have had something to do with it. I don't think he was alone, though. But anyway, if you remember, when they executed Timothy, when they were going to execute Timothy McVeigh, uh, they put a stay of, of execution. They, they held it off for a little while. They said, oh, we've got to look at the records. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. They waited until his 33rd, after his 33rd birthday to put him on a table that looks like this. Okay? You get where I'm going with this? Um, and then they, then they take his life. They execute him. Uh, we mentioned the, the World Trade Towers being standing exactly... 33 years and then they're destroyed and in their place and Time Magazine just issued uh, a new cover uh, called Beyond 9-11 and it features the, the two towers of lights. You remember those? The two towers of lights that were, um, that were uh, shown every night after the World Trade Center was destroyed. Those towers of lights went from March 11, okay, that's 3:11, to April the 13th, exactly 
33 days. And it was interesting to me, and I just count things, they put 44 lights in this one and 44 lights in this one. That is 88 lights. 4 times 11, 4 times 11, 8 times 11. And the beast is the 8th and is of the 7th and going to the, goeth into perdition, the Bible says. The number 8 has everything to do with the beast as well. Remember the 88 years it took to birth the European Union and bring the euro into existence? The 88 lights here. Okay? Um, and then we have the idea, of the, the, what I call the 33rd parallel. Um, on or around the 33rd uh, parallel around the earth, you've got, some, you've got some really weird things happening that I think are part of a conspiracy to bring about a new world order. You have to, remember, you have to destroy the old one. And let's go all the way back to the 1860s. You have the United States of America, which, which for the most part was founded upon the principles that are contained in the Bible. And you have the, uh, this, this beautiful haven for Protestant churches, and I mean non-Catholic churches, to grow and to be nurtured by the Scriptures. And the devil hates that. And so there is a biblical concept that says, um, you know, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So we have the Civil War. Incidentally, the first place that shots were fired of the Civil War, Charleston, South Carolina, which is right on the 33rd parallel where an ancient Scottish Rite Masonic temple exists. It's called the Mother Lodge of Freemasonry in America. And uh, there were exactly 11 states in the Confederacy trying to divide and destroy a nation. Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, let's jump forward to 1963. Charleston, South Carolina. There was a Roman Catholic church in Charleston, South Carolina. And there was St. Paul's Cathedral in the Vatican, 1963. And according to former Jesuit Malachi Martin, a ceremony took place. A ceremony that involved um, a, a, a young girl. It involved, I think, a dog for a sacrifice. And uh, it, was, it was conducted in two places, St. Paul's Cathedral and by telephone, in this Catholic church in Charleston, South Carolina, on the 33rd parallel, and it was called the enthronement ceremony of the fallen angel Lucifer. Malachi Martin wrote about this in his book called The Wind Swept House. He described it in detail. Um, it was known, it became known by a pope. A guy by the name of, uh, of Albino Luciani. Uh, and it became known to him once he became pope that there was a very, very heavy... Freemasonic presence inside the Vatican. In fact, these people were involved in some pretty shady dealings that involved the Vatican Bank and the Italian Mafia and the P2, which is Italian Freemasonry, and on and on and on and on. And Pope John Paul I found out about all this and probably found out about the, uh, the enthronement ceremony that took place decided that these aren't the people he wanted surrounding him as Pope. And so he wrote a letter saying, I'm going to have this person and this person and this person and this person. One was the Vatican Secretary of State, the second in command, was going to have them resign and step down. And the letter became known. Pope John Paul I was found dead the next morning in his bed, exactly 33 days after becoming Pope. Are you getting... You're sort of getting the idea here, okay? Uh, Atlanta, Georgia, 1996, 33rd parallel. You have the Olympic Park bombings. Dallas, Texas, near the 33rd parallel, between the 32nd and 33rd parallel. That's the place where John F. Kennedy was killed on the 11th month of the 22nd day. Those two numbers together make 33. Dealey Plaza was the former site of a Masonic Lodge. Even the layout of Dealey Plaza, the two streets, or the three streets, Elm and, and Main Street, that come together, they form an obelisk, a symbol for the Antichrist. March 30th, 3 1981, Ronald Reagan steps out of a hotel meeting place and is shot and nearly killed by John Hinckley. Jr. And everywhere I go, I always ask, who was the father of John Hinckley Jr.? 
and some really smart person says John Hinckley Sr. And that's exactly correct. Something that wasn't reported on CBS, ABC, or NBC, or any of the news outlets, was that John Hinckley Sr. was very, very close friends to George Herbert Walker Bush, the former head of the CIA, um, who didn't like Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan didn't like George Bush, and all of a sudden they're running mates now. And George Herbert Walker Bush could have been that president had Reagan died on that day. Now, am I saying George Bush was... Res I don't know that. I wouldn't say that. But I think a spirit was involved here. I definitely think a spirit was involved here. Remember, um, remember the mo in fact, remember all these dozens of movies where the aliens are coming down and sometimes they're crashing their, their, um, their UFOs everywhere like in Starman. Roswell, New Mexico, 1947. Remember, that's a multiple of 11. 1947, supposedly, a UFO crashes. Roswell, New Mexico, 33rd parallel. White Sands, New Mexico, the place of the detonation of the first atomic bomb at the Trinity site. Let me... Uh, the Trinity site has everything to do with that logo and what it represents. That's on the 33rd parallel. Have you ever heard of a highway called Highway 666? It's real. It exists. Um, it goes around the 33rd parallel. Phoenix, Arizona. You, you know what a phoenix is? Phoenix is a bird that is an emblem of the Antichrist. The Antichrist right now is in the pit. He's in hell. He is in flames. The idea is that the beast is going to rise up out of that pit um, to become the king of this world. He is going to relive. That's what the phoenix is. It's a bird. A, a bird is like a picture of a spirit in the Bible who is thrown into the fire or falls into the fire or flies into the fire and out of its ashes is reborn that's what phoenix represents and that town just happens to be on the 33rd parallel so in um i can't remember what year it was you have the phoenix lights you have this massive ufo sighting filmed photographed videotaped eyewitnessed by thousands of people and no one to this day has a plausible explanation for what this is in phoenix arizona on the 33rd parallel uh, Nagasaki, Japan is also on the 33rd parallel. You see they detonate, they test detonate the bomb in uh, White Sands, New Mexico on the 33rd parallel and then they use it in Nagasaki, Japan on the 33rd parallel. Let me give you another city that's on the 33rd parallel. She's called Babylon. She was in Iraq. Uh, Babylon was being rebuilt by Saddam Hussein, who called himself Nebuchadnezzar II. Um, the fall of Baghdad, this is interesting, the fall of Baghdad took place on April 9th. That's the 99th day of the year, 9 times 11, or 33 times 3. It was on May 1st, you remember this, May 1st, 2004, President George Bush flies out to an aircraft carrier and uh, stands up there and says, the war's over. We have victory in Iraq. Well, you know, we still have guys over there right now, okay? But he had to do it for some reason on the 121st day of the year, May 1st, okay? Barack Hussein Obama of 2011, on the same day, May, 20, May 1st, the 121st day of the year, comes out and says, the guy who masterminded 9-11... Uh, yeah, we shot and killed him in Pakistan here a few days ago, and I'm just now announcing it on May 1st, 2011, the 121st day of the year. He did so at the White House. Did you know, did you know, that Washington, D.C., on the 77th meridian, and Babylon, Iraq, on the 44th meridian, uh, uh, the, on the other side of the of zero meridian, of the prime meridian, they call it, on the other side of the prime meridian, they are exactly 121 degrees apart.